Welcome to a very wet, very cold October morning. It's anti-social o'clock, 6.37 to be precise. And the good news is we are off to make another movie. Well, another little TV ditty. Um, we are off to Daniel Kiff, who runs Kiff's Valeting and Detailing. And uh, he is based over in Buckinghamshire. Um, I think we're going to somewhere called Granabra or somewhere like that. A uh, little place. Satnav is saying it's, a, it's about an hour and a half away. And um, the idea is we're going to cover headlight restoration on dear old Betty. And we're also going to do um, some interior work. He has a Nissan L Grand something, basically a large black bus uh, with sort of seven seats and leather interior and weird uh, shag pile carpet as well, I believe. So really looking forward to doing that. And we're going to do the mystery product as well. I've got some Kochami speed glass cleaner lined up for him, uh, which he doesn't know about as yet. And uh, I believe the product he wants to show me, uh, which will work very nicely into the interior feature that we're doing, um, is the uh, Dr. Leather leather wipes, which I've heard plenty of good things about and I've never used myself. So it'd be interesting to see how they work. And the whole idea is we're going to be creating um, the video sequence is going to be on the headlight restoration. So we're going to show you everything you need to do to restore your headlights. And this Scooby, it's 17 years old, headlights are pretty misty. They're not too bad. I've seen much worse, uh, but they've got strange sort of chemical etching on them, uh, which isn't totally brilliant. So we're going to get rid of that with luck. Um, and he's going to coat them, I believe, with some IGL coatings, headlight stuff, which is fun. So for now, all that remains uh, is to hit the road. Um, it's apparently very muddy and uh, quite a narrow lanes down where he is. Um, and I've never met um, Dan before, so rather looking forward to that. It's always good to meet a new PBD member. Today we're in Granbra in Buck Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire um, and we're with Daniel Kiff of Kiff's Valeting and Detailing. Hiya. And uh, we've got various things we're doing today. For issue six of the Pro Detailer, we are doing the interior on your very own Nissan Elgrand. Elgrand, yep. What's, uh, what sort of car is that? Uh, Japanese MPV, um, it's seven seater, uh, it's about the size of a house, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, 3.5 V6. Interesting. Detuned Nissan 350Z engine. Cool. Uh, rear wheel drive, switchable four wheel drive. So it's quite an interesting vehicle. And yep. it's a, a, not sold in this country originally, I'm guessing. No, no. It's only cool. import, only. So we've got lots of interior bits and bobs like leather cleaning, we've got plastic trim, yep. screen cleaning as well. Yep. Um, and also how to look after dark or tinted glass um, and the various precautions you can take with that. But that will be in the magazine. For the purposes of today, uh, Daniel's very kindly agreed to make the near perfect Betty um, <coughs> marginally better. Um, and how are you going to do that? Um, work on the headlights. Gotcha. So to me, the headlights, they look all right. What's wrong with them? Uh, as you can see here, it's got a lot of clouding at the top. Gotcha. Um, looks like from oxidization from the sun. Um, okay, so that's just UV damage on the polycarbonate yeah. plastic, I guess. Yeah, and also it could be some form of product that's eating into it. You can see it's dripped down here. Yeah, chemical etching. Yep. And this one's quite bad. That one's a little better, but yep. obviously we'll do both. Yep. Um, and what's interesting is that the oxidation is on the top surface, which shows it is very much sun related because, you know, the sun's normally above one. Um, and so how are you going to improve on this? Uh, go, go through various grades of wet and dry by hand and by machine. So, Dan, tell me what kit you've got here to do the headlights on Young Betty. Well, first of all, we're going to start with the paper. Um, it's a thousand grade, as you can feel, it's very sure. coarse. So it's, it's coarse for what we're doing. I mean, yep. a, a woodworker, the P, the P number, so to speak, refers to the grit um, of the sandpaper. Yep. And so for woodwork, for example, use P80, which is really aggressive stuff. And yep. you go to say P240 and 320. With this sort of work and paint stuff, uh, really, I mean, some will start at maybe 500, 800 sometimes if it's yeah, really bad. Yeah, uh, Audis go down to 320. People have had to go down to get them to bring them up. Yeah, so that's really aggressive. 320 is kind of more woodworky side yeah. of things. Um, and um, with this one, do you use this dry? Uh, no, wet. Wet. Hence the term wet and dry. Um, and it's basically more aggressive when it's dry, and then you reduce the aggression and improve the lubricity yep. uh, when it's wet. Not as much friction of the paper against the product, uh, against the headlights. Just there. Perfect. So uh, once you've done your P1000, what's the next step? Yeah, I'd go oh, by machine. Cool. Uh, with 3000. So are they Trizax? Yep. Cool. So we've got uh, their slight spongy layer there, um, and that's 3,000, so that's very fine. To be honest, on your finger, it doesn't even feel vaguely abrasive, just a little no. bit grippy. Yep. Um, and let's have a look at this toy. 
sorry, not toy, important professional detailing device. Um, this is essentially a mini drill. It's powered by lithium, uh, bat lithium batteries, obviously not just to dribble lithium into it, that'd be weird. Um, and uh, it's similar to the AC Delco machine. Yep, um, and, and the Milwaukee. A Milwaukee, yep. absolutely. Nice little thing, isn't it? Yep. And it's nice, light and manoeuvrable um, is the key with that. And this is a? Uh, 3M attachment mm -hmm. uh, for this to put the pads on too. Gotcha, and that's what, two inches, three inches? Uh, three inch. Three inch attachment there, and that's Velcro on the back there. So we've got that one. Um, and you do, what, one or two grades of sandpaper with that? Yeah, well, what we'll do is, as we go along, we see what it's looking like, um, and then decide whether we could go up to 6,000, which is very fine. Very fine indeed. Yeah. So uh, we've looked at the sanding stage. What comes after that? Uh, be onto the polishing. Okay, so these are compounds. I can see they're conventional paint compounds. Yep. Gotcha, and they work on polycarbonate, okay? Yep, it will remove any marks left from the uh, sanding process. Gotcha. So we've got three Cochamy here, the good yep. old H8, Yep. Uh, which is diminishing, isn't it? It's quite an aggressive cut. Yeah, heavy cut. So we'd work with that first. And we'd go down to the M2. Gotcha. Uh, remove any holograms and even like scratches steel. This is the very fine stuff, yeah. Yep, and then finish with a finishing polish. So that's the, about the finest polish I think that Kochami do. Yep. Um, and that's a very, very fine, you know, yep. it won't remove much, but it'll just improve really the, um, what do you call it, the reflection, yes, the surface, if yeah. you like. Um, and I can see you have a flex. Is, am, am I right in thinking that's the PE8 4-80? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's cool. I, I have very few friends. <laughs> um, so uh, with this, I can see you've got an extension bar on it. Yep. Um, and how big is that pad? Is that another uh, three, th inch. three inch pad? Yep. Um, and this allows you to get all the sort of angles in that you want. I mean, you probably yep. wouldn't hold it like that, probably more like that, I'm guessing. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, good piece of kit, these. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I can see you've got various different pads and stuff. Um, we've got, oh yeah, these are the sanding pads we talked about. And then we've got these. Cool. Which would you use with which compound? Uh, so to go with the H8 with the orange. So that's quite, an, quite it's hard, hard actually, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Yep. These are much softer. And then we'd come down to the yellow one would go with the M2. Mm -hmm. And then to finish the black super soft with the P2. Gotcha. And but I quite like there's, there's quite a lot of depth for these and give, isn't there? Yeah. So you can really get around all the contours. That's it. Yeah. That's brilliant. Cool. And so we've sanded it down. We've polished it. Yep. What's the next step? Uh, to protect it. Cool. Uh, with using iGel coatings, head lights. I've heard of this. Yep. Have you found, have you used this before? Yeah, it's a very good product. Cool. Uh, it lasts about 12 months. 12 months. And it's 6H Takes, hardness? Yep. So it gives some sort of abrasion resistance, basically yep. the uh, hardness ratings. So you see ceramic coatings and stuff going 8, 9H even, yep. uh, which is a sort of supposed to be a pencil lead scale. It's a little bit difficult to gauge because there are various different ways of measuring it. Um, but certainly 6H is, is, is better than nothing, isn't yep. it? Um, and also I believe that one's kind of focusing also on the clarity of the light as well. Because you imagine it's a sort of a, uh, I think it's ceramic based, isn't it? So yep. it's SiO2 is contained. Now, the term ceramic is really quite a big one because you get it now in waxes, in spray sealants, in ceramic paint sealants. Yep, that's cool. um, but essentially it's using that technology to do it. And certainly from what I've heard, people are, people are absolutely loving this. Yeah. Um, and the big thing with it is also UV filters. Um, and bear in mind that the oxidation on these headlights is a result of UV light. Yeah. Um, and that causes oxidation, uh, which is literally just adding oxygen or removing oxygen, I think, from the chemical bonds. Yep. Um, we probably need a chemist. Um, <laughs> and um, they uh, UV blockers essentially block the UV light, so reduce the rate at which they um, oxidize. Yeah, and hopefully not see this too soon again yeah no well that'd be good and equally you can reapply i guess yeah after a year or two yep. and, and uh, 12 months but cool. um it has been known to last a little bit longer cool varies on the headlight and, and how how much you're yeah. using the car i guess yeah. yeah um no well that is brilliant and what's this what's this secret potion you've got here then that's just water water right <laughs> okay i'll go back to my box shortly but one other thing i've done is uh betty has got uh the halogen bulbs that she came with um which are a little bit yellow and a little bit sad and a little bit worn um so i've splashed out on her um instead of what you normally get for a car you know petrol and stuff um i've got some uh high quality bulbs now it's really important with these good quality bulbs make a real difference they can still run on halogen um, and some of them call themselves xenon but it's just because the gas within the filament it's not an hid bulb uh, for that you'd need a balancer and a blaster um, but for this car these will give supposedly up to 130 percent more light um, one thing i would advise though is f always always go for the ones of the right wattage with an e-mark because there are lots on sale which are about 100 watts they'll melt your wiring and they're illegal to use on the road so what's the first step First of all, we will mask it up mm -hmm. uh, so we don't damage any paintwork. Um, Let's get cracking. Using the tape. Using the, well, yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> I'll just open up the powerhouse. Oh, actually, do you want the engine open? Is that going to be useful because you can tape around there? Yeah, we can come right to the edge here. Cool. I'm just giving everybody a cheeky shot of the 
the super super ooze car engine there we go there it's basically a porsche this So, Dan, um, clearly you've been working for sort of 10, 15 minutes and made a big difference. Um, we'll start with this one. I hate to break it to you, but it does rather look like you've destroyed my light. What have you done? Like this one, we've gone over with a thousand grit mm -hmm. to take out any imperfections. Uh, it seems to be working well and acting well to the um, sandpaper. And why has it gone misty? Because it's essentially added in more marks, I guess. Yeah. I see mean, eventually that will be clear. It'll be clear. Well, I can yep. see on this one, um, this is looking better. I can see that the drip marks have all gone. Yep. Um, but it's still quite, quite kind of powdery look, almost translucent, if yep. you like. And I'm guessing that's going to disappear in the next stages. Yep. This one's gone over with 3,000 as well. Mm -hmm. You can notice the difference between the two. Yeah, big difference. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, I think we'll go over them with 6,000. Mm -hmm. We'll do this one with 3,000. Then 6,000 both, both of them, them. and yeah. then polish them both up, I think, from there. And they're behaving as you want them yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, coming out well. Great stuff. Well, crack on. These are looking really good now. Yep. Um, I can see there's still some misting. They're not what I call desperately clear. Yep. But they're definitely an improvement. And so you did 3,000? 3, 3,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then 6,000 on both of them. Cool. Uh, so once we polish them, they should be clear. That'd afterwards. be good. And did you do that all in one charge on the battery? Yeah. That's impressive stuff. The next step now is machine Polish. polishing. Yep. Cool. Cool. I will let you get on with that one. Okay. Cool. Wow, Dan, that looks amazing. Yep, they've come up perfect, really. They look basically like new. Yep. Um, awesome. but the good thing is there's not even been a coating on it yet. So this is just literally polished Polish, plastic, essentially? Yep. And that's what great. we'll do is we'll put, put the protection on it and that should give it a bit more of a shine. Cool. And then good for a minimum of 12 months. And in terms of applying it, what's the, what's the dealio? What, what's the process in applying the protection? Do you have to leave it to cure for a long time? Um, no, literally, as soon as we, I will put it on with a sway block, um, and then literally wipe it straight off any residue um, and then it's good to go. It's good to go. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well crack on. Let's see what it looks yep. like. I can't wait. So what are you spraying on here then? Uh, an IPA just to take off any residue uh, yeah, from the polish mm -hmm. and then it helps the coating bond um, the actual more to the coating. plastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose with, I don't know, fillers are such an issue with compounds, obviously with paint, people yeah. talk about fillers. Yeah. Um, with plastic, I imagine there's certainly oils in, in, the, in the compounds that could lodge themselves without doing this. Yeah, you could have the same problem with fillers. If you've got fine scratches, mm -hmm. it will fill it. And then when you put the um, coating on without putting this on, after a few weeks, you'll start seeing the scratches. But this will just get rid of any fillers. So we can see sure the actual condition. Good. Yeah. Yep. And good news is, I can't see, apart from the odd little stone chip and stuff, um, any actual sign of swell marks or anything in there? Yeah, they're, no, they're good to go. Good lights, cool. Dan, you've done amazing work here. Yeah. They, these literally look like new. They've come up well. Absolutely. A bit like they come from the factory like that. They do. And I have to admit, I did a quick search online for what yep. new headlights would be. Um, and while you can pick up used ones, which would probably be even worse than what these were like, yep. they were sort of 50 quid each. New yep. ones are about 125. Um, and getting them official, from official channels and stuff, you could be looking at well over 250 quid. Yep. So this normally takes you apparently, what, about an hour to two hours? Yeah, hour to two depends on how bad the condition is. Yep. And so something like uh, you're saying Audi TTs, for example, are quite hard work. Yeah, so you would be going more to the two hours. Gotcha, and you have yeah. to go what to a, to a more aggressive sandpaper, yeah, I guess. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah, yeah. and um, and you would charge for those what 25, 30 yeah, a light? Yeah, about twenty five pounds. A so that's yeah. fifty quid to get your lights like new, as opposed to over two hundred and fifty. And what's more, with a classic car like this, uh, to maintain its great and vast value, uh, it's important to have the original parts. Yeah. And so we've used this, and it's good for the environment as well because we're not chucking away bits and bobs. Yep. Moment of truth. I'm going to fire up as well, so we get the full voltage. 
Be ready for the rumble. Listen to that. Anyway, <laughs> God, it's like looking into the sun. Properly good, properly good. Well, I think we can safely say that the headlight restoration on Betty has been a roaring success. Um, there's one more thing I was wondering. Yep. We have the mystery product. Yep. Now, I remember the product you were a big fan of were the Dr. Leather wipes that That's we were right. using on, on the L Grand. Yep. Um, and I was wondering, I've got over here, let me just grab over here, we've got some Cochumi. Uh, it's ooh, that way around, called Speed Glass Cleaner. Have you ever used this product? I can see you use a Cochumi um, product. No, I haven't. No, not haven't. for the glass cleaner. Well, this was sent to me uh, by Slim's Detailing as part of their 50th anniversary. Um, and they sent us a nice little goodie bag of bits and bobs. Um, this is why it's got strange masking tape. This is not factory fit. Um, and I happen to have a Bugatti uh, with a, don't laugh, it's a Bugatti, uh, with a filthy rear window that we use for carting around the gazebo and the camera kit and the cameraman as well. Um, and um, uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity to put this one to the test. So I tell you what, we'll go over there. If you yep. can grab some microfibers, yep. we'll have a squirt and see. Yep. That sounded wrong. Never mind. So... Uh, I promised you a Bugatti. Yep. Now, what were you expecting? A uh, Veyron. A Veyron, or an EB110. Yep. Love EB110s. Yep. Um, in fact, this is what we call the Vanron. It's a more practical, marginally cheaper, ever so slightly slower. It's probably the best Bugatti they and ever made. And it's clean. It is. It's, it's currently got what we like to call patina. Um, this is patinaed o Buckinghamshire as a consequence of your lovely rain and muddy roads. Um, so I take no responsibility. Obviously, before it came, it was spotless and perfectly detailed. I mean, this thing would have been a show winner um, if there was a category for Bugatti Vanrons. Um, anyhow, less about that, more about this. Um, I tell you what, it's got a little twiddly do. Let's give it. This is brand new as well, so it should be at its best. Oh, there we go. Come through. Have a play with that. Cool. Now, as you can see, uh, this is a very, very dirty rear window. Um, I had my rear wiper on for about 30 seconds, trying to clean as what I can. Um, so this is a serious test for any glass cleaner. And bear in mind, there are some glass cleaners out there that are great when there's not much dirt um, and they create a nice sort of streak-free finish. And there are others that aren't so necessarily so great on the finish, but they're really good at cutting through the dirt. So we're kind of giving it a double challenge here, as well as obviously giving the privilege of working on a Bugatti. Um, how are you finding it? Yeah, so far so good. Cool, cool. Gosh, it's really pulling some stuff off there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when did you get into valeting and detailing? Um, well, I've been doing it professionally for about two years, mm -hmm. um, but I've always been into it since I started driving. Yeah. Um, we used to go to cruises and shows and keeping the cars clean was, a, was important as building them for yeah. the shows. And what did you do before? Um, I started as a mechanic at college Wow, so that's um, ideal for automotive application. Yeah, and then got into wheel refurbishment, and um, now this. Oh, cool. So it's been a natural progression. Yeah. You're, what, 30 years old or so 30, nowadays? Yeah. 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 So. Well, the nice side of doing this course is I'm going to be able to see on the way home, yeah. unless Matt, of course, blocks the hole of the back again with all his camera equipment. <laughs> Sometimes with glass cleaning, you find that less is more. Quite often, a lot of people squirt loads on, and the general rule is less is more. Uh, however, when it's filthy like this, uh, the rule is more is more. Uh, you need as much cleaning concentrate um, to work with the substrate, i.e. the dirt, um, to make it look good. And I can see here we've got rid of the dirt quite well. We've got some smearing, but I can yeah. see it's, it's fading off. There are various different types of glass cleaners. So you've got ones that are sort of based on a vinegar, based even some sort of detergent-based ones. But the most popular by far are ones that are based on essentially an alcohol, isopropanol, um, of some description. And the benefit of that is that that evaporates off and doesn't leave much residue. Um, but the difference between just using, say, diluted IPA and a proper glass cleaner is uh, glass cleaner has got other additives in there which will aid uh, the cleaning and the, uh, the kind of the flashing off, if you like, to leave that finish. Um, now, the general rule with glass is that you do horizontal or vertical, but horizontal stripes on the back and then vertical on the inside of the glass so that if you look at the glass and there's some streaks or some muck remaining, you know which side it is because you can see the streaks and the movement. Um, and we're currently just doing the outside of the glass, um, predominantly out of laziness. And also, I can't show anyone the back of my van uh, for various reasons. And again, you can see there's little bits of residue. Um, and we're using a couple microfibers here. The trick is always to use one microfiber to put on and another to take off. If it's really dirty, like it is, you might want to use a third, particularly if you're doing all the car. Um, 
But I would say that's done quite a good job. Yeah. And in terms of performance, are you, is it? Yes, yeah, really well. Works, works really, really well. well. Yeah. And the Kochami glass cleaner is widely available at um, everywhere from Slim's and uh, Ultimate Finish, I believe, and Clean Shiny and possibly Shop and Shine and all of these places. Um, so it's a widely available product. It's not very expensive. And that looks like, what, 750 mil or a litre even? Uh, 750. 750 mil. So same as a bottle of wine. Um, and I don't know why I came to that immediately, but hey-ho. Um, not an alcoholic. And... Um, I think it's done a nice job. Yeah. So I tell you what, if you hold on to that, yep. use it on a few more cars. Yep. You know, I mean, I imagine none of them will be quite as nice as the no. Bugatti van. <laughs> um, but anyway, some will be cleaner, some will be yeah. dirtier. Um, and see what you think. Give us your feedback. Yep. Well, it's been brilliant being here today. Thank no you problem. very much for inviting me over. No, thank Bessie you. is looking amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to hurtle back to Sirencester and start editing some video and doing some photos and writing some magazines and stuff like that. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Thank you for watching part one. I hope you enjoyed the headlight restoration with Daniel. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, click here. And if you'd like to watch part two, click here.